We are in the GSN newsroom with Max Sally, the founder and director of Monumental Minerals, which trades on the Venture Exchange under the symbol MNRL. Welcome, Max. Thank you for having me again, Guy. My pleasure. Max, today I'm, I want to learn about what a founder does, your thinking and your strategy. But before we get into that, can you give me an elevator pitch for Monumental Minerals? So Monumental Minerals is a company focused uh, on the electric metal sector, magnet sector. So we have a rare earth project, uh, the Gemi project in Cohila, Mexico, which is very close to the Texas-USA border. And we have uh, Laguna Blanca, which is a Chilean brine asset. Uh, and very close to uh, a definitive agreement on the third asset, which is another Chilean brine asset close to Luna Blanca. We're going to get more into those assets later. I am interested, you know, we, we interview a lot of CEOs, geologists, mine managers, strategic advisors. Very seldom do I talk to somebody who is a specialist in founding a company. So I am interested to learn about that from you. I can tell a little bit from your resume. You, I know you founded Advantage Lithium, which you sold for $69 million. You founded Defense Metals, which I believe is going to play a very important role in rare earth production in North America. And I know that you avoid trends because I see that you, you didn't found any graphene, blockchain, or cannabis companies. Tell me more about your philosophy, your thinking. What, what are your must-haves? What are your red flags, jurisdiction, asset, et cetera? So I, I don't do things I don't know. Uh, you could you know, be a person that does a lot and knows a little about a lot, or you could be the person that does a little and knows a lot. And so for me, it comes down to mining. Uh, Defense Metals was the first company I ever founded. Mm -hmm. There is a very high chance it will go into production which is saying a lot considering that, you know, most companies that are listed on the venture or CSC will never go into production. Uh, yep. Defense Metals is getting close to a, a PFS, pre-feasibility study. Yep. And that, that says a lot. And so uh, Advantage Lithium was the second company and it was sold to Orcobre for now Elchem for 69 million. But if you look at the value of the stock received, that transaction is now worth about 400 million. And so I always want to get back into the lithium sector. And so yeah. founding Monumental, you know, I build these vehicles with, <laughs> with investors, with bankers, promoters and such. And you come up with a, what is a very tight shareholder base. And, you know, you, you find a quality asset, you raise the money for that asset. And, and coming into the lithium brine space now is something I've always wanted to do again. And we have, and Jamil and I, have found some phenomenal assets in Chile. The only producer in, in uh, Chile is SQM and Albemarle's as their Atacama mine, which is the most profitable lithium solar in the world. Uh, and so just getting back into the space is good because if you look at our news release last week, we had brine sample results from an auger hole, so 1.5, 1.6 meters yeah. deep, that were up to 405 milligrams per liter. And that is following significant precipitation like a snowfall or rain. And when it snows or it rains, it goes into the ground. It's, it's absorbed. It's not it's disappearing. And so to be able to have that high grade of lithium content, uh, especially with our very low magnesium, mm -hmm. is, is extremely significant. The average producer in Argentina is producing about one to one. Uh, magnesium affects your production. For us to have 2.5 lithium to magnesium, is significant, not only for being in Chile, but if you compare us to every single lithium producer, that, is an, that doesn't change when you drill down to depth. So that ratio is extremely significant and it makes the quality of brine better for production, period. But if you look at my insider filings, I bought a lot of stock and yeah. I truly believe that these sample grades will reflect with our drill results and, and the one nice thing is when you drill a hole, the ratio to lithium to magnesium doesn't change. So as a Canadian explorer and developer, you're comfortable with the regulatory environment in Chile? In terms of mining, it is the number one country in South America. And so for us, you know, having a, a secure banking system is very, very, very big. You've got a, I guess you could call it secondary product, uh, 
uh, in Chile, which is the cesium. Can yes. you tell me about the demand drivers for that? What is it? What does it sell for? How, how could that change the economics? A wheelbarrow of cesium is worth $7 million. And so the main use of cesium is in oil and gas rigs. They use it for uh, drilling fluids, for lubrication. But it's so expensive, they rent it. And then there's a lot of oil and gas wells in Argentina and in Chile and yeah. parts of Colombia. To have a source coming from that close range versus Manitoba, which is one of the biggest cesium mines in the world. It's hard rock. And the nice thing about our cesium is it's a sediment where the cesium you're getting in Manitoba comes in a hard rock. So then you got to put it into a stage, then you got to put it into a stage. But we're actually getting half the work done for us. And, and so the value of that commodity is substantial. Now, smaller market, but you're getting lithium and cesium to the most valuable metals in the world in one asset. And so we're currently doing assays for cesium, for cesium sediment, yeah. uh, and those results should be out soon. What is the one thing that investors should re remember about monumental minerals? Well, I think the best thing to remember, I mean, general, I mean, you're, you're investing in a, in a junior exploration story. I mean, the reason why we do this is because, you know, I mean, I've, a, a lot of people that I know, and I'm sure you know, and have made a lot of money off uh, exploration stories. And so to remember, I think, you know, the fact that we are in the two hottest sectors, lithium and rare earth, uh, they are early stage, so it will take a bit longer. But the fact is, if you believe that the prices of these commodities will either remain the same, which is fine, mm -hmm. or increase, even if they decrease a bit, the profitability of these assets could be substantial. Versus, you know, if you're doing a precious metals, you know, silver, uh, a gold, platinum, palladium, whatever that is, the market needs what we have. As a slightly more advanced company, which is coming, I think we'll show that to the market. And again, anything we do with a quality result will bring in significant investment. Max, thank you very much for your time today. I, I enjoyed talking to you and I, I, I hope we can talk again. Thank you.